no matter what people say, always figure it out for yourself. I use just emojis, cause when you get up in your feelings, that energy be so in motion. Pharaoh said, teach the queens, you got it and they want it, but I'm passing out the tip. What's going on, everybody? You already know what it is. It's your boy, Westbrook in the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace. All right, so um, earlier today, I got a, or earlier yesterday, actually, I got a DM on Instagram from Lil Shocky, and he asked, hey, man, nobody has a video on how to mix and master in the Spire Studio. Was wondering if you could make a video. I'm a rookie at all of this. Little shocking, bro. Just like I told you, I got you. So, real quick, guys, let's look at what is mixing. All right, so according to Wikipedia, mixing is in sound recording and reproduction, audio mixing is the process of combining multi track recordings into a final mono, stereo, or surround sound product. You may be asking yourself, Westbrook, you're supposed to be teaching us how to mix and master on Aspire Studio. Why are you giving us the definition of mixing instead of showing us how to mix? I've showed you guys how to mix before on multiple occasions, but the reason why I'm making this video and giving you the definition of mixing is because I feel like, guys, we are over complicating things. Stop for me going to full sale telling you guys I went there for recording engineering. It's important that I give you the definition of mixing because we are overcomplicating this. And I feel like the reason why we overcomplicate this is because we see Pro Tools. And when we go in the studio, the computer is there and they got all the plugins running and all this other stuff. Da -da 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 -da. And it's, 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 it's overwhelming to what the overall idea actually consists of. When you're mixing on the Spire Studio, you got eight tracks that you can record on, correct? Now, when you record a song raw in the studio, no auto-tune or anything like that, you just record it raw vocals. When you think about mixing, you think about going, sitting down with your engineer, him putting plugins on your vocals and doing that type of stuff to make the song sound good, right? Now, when you're recording with the Spire Studio, guys, you need to put the plugins on your voice before you record so you're basically just doing everything the same but you're doing it in the opposite uh, opposite way so instead of adding reverb to your digital audio workstation vocals you're just gonna add the reverb to your vocals before you start recording so this is what's gonna give you your reverb on certain uh, aspects of the song where you want the reverb to punchy and heavy and this is what's going to give you overdrive if you're trying to put um what's it called if you're trying to put amps on your voice or anything like that so basically what you're gonna be doing is doing everything you do on Pro Tools but in reverse obviously you're gonna be a little a lot more limited as far as what plugins you can use but you're just doing this process in reverse instead of forward. So you can't put plugins on your voice after the song is recorded using Aspire Studio. But what you can do is cycle through the plugins that they do have, attach the plugin that you feel like is right for that specific type of vocal, and then use the eight tracks that they give you to display the best song you can possibly have while doing the live recording. Because like I said, <clears throat> if you're doing this on Pro Tools, you can make mistakes, do all this, do all of that. Then when you go on Pro Tools, mixing would include going through, chopping out breaths. On the Spire Studio, you need to make sure you have a best, the best air that you possibly can put into your lungs so that way you don't have as many breaths in your vocals. You can also, um, we can also add reverb like we spoke about. You can add distortion. You can add all these other things after the fact of recording. But with the Spire Studio, you need to do these things before you record. So with the Spire Studio, you need to do these things before you record. And with Pro Tools, you can do these things after you record. That's basically it. By definition of Wikipedia, mastering is a form of audio post-production. In the process of preparing and transferring recorded audio, from the source containing the final mix to the data storage device. The source from which all copies will be produced. So mastering, guys, is simply taking the song at its final mix and transferring it from as a final copy from one device 
to another. So let's say you have your original on your computer, your master is then gonna be put on your storage drive, right? And then from your master, duplicates will be made. So you'll take the master storage drive and you'll take it and go get some CDs made. Now, when we think about mastering outside of the definition that they just gave us, we think about um, making a song sound whole, right? But really, that's supposed to be done in the final mix, you guys. So um, when it comes to mastering on the Spire Studio um, and when it comes to mastering in general, what you really want to do is just tame your levels. A lot of people like to make it more complicated than it really is because obviously they're making money off of this. They have a job to do so the more complicated an electrician makes installing electricity or, or circuits and all of this light switches and stuff look then the more you're going to call that person over to do that service for you and the less you're going to try to do it on your own. But <clears throat> I mean and there is no difference with mixing and mastering. So because the Spire Studio has made mastering so simple, it's shying a lot of people away. It's scaring a lot of people away. Um, if they would have made more buttons and more this and more that, more people would be attracted to it. Because when we look at mastering, we don't look at mastering from the dictionary definition of mastering. We look at mastering from our own idea of what mastering actually is. And when we look at mastering, we think, oh yeah, plugins and we got to level out and do all this other stuff. So Spire Studio is already doing this stuff for you guys. Like I said in my five tips about the Spire Studio, all you have to do is slide the bar on the Spire Studio in order to create more warmth or create more coolness in your track. And that is going to determine how the different levels poke out. Why are people scared of the Spire Studios mastering feature? I'm not sure because they use plugins like RX7 and all these other things that are created by Isotope, but then they don't trust Isotope when it comes to making a Spire Studio with mastering capabilities. So, <laughs> it's crazy. But real quick guys, let's jump into some examples so that I can show you all and Lil Shaka exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to mixing and mastering on the Spire Studio. All right, guys, I got my trusty Spire Studio here. We're going to power it on. <sighs> I got my phone complete with the Timothy Westbrook the second phone case. As you can see, it's a little cracked up, but that's cool. All right, <clears throat> so your battery is critically low, guys. So we got to hurry to fudge up. All right, so let's look at this drill. All right, guys, so let's look at this. Um, let's look at the 16 bar challenge that we did for um, Isotope um, trying to try to win the Free Spire Studio, right? So um, on, this, on this page right here, on this um, track list, right? You got the beat at the top, it's in purple. You got the first verse in blue. You got the intro and the intro ad libs and teal and green. And then down here in this lime green, you got the highlights. And then we got some more highlights down here. So when it comes to mixing and the Spire Studio, like I said before, you want to put the plugins on your voice before you start. So let's back out of this one, right? And let's go to the blank one. Drilling by Jada. All right, let's bring up this one and let's play it. All right, so to recreate what we did on the first spot, let's go with some spaces, right? Some 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 reverb. So typically I like to use Let's see where is it at? Check check. I like to use deep space or intimate space vibes. I'm gonna turn this down though, the amount down, might turn the tone down. But you can pick any one of these that you feel like fits, you know, the, the reverb that you're going for, right? <clears throat> and then in that first part, you can hear me singing. They ain't working cause it's down, I really want it. And with the reverb effect on there, I'm gonna get what I would add 
had I just recorded the raw vocals, put it on Pro Tools. So let's do that. Alright, so then we're going to go back, turn this off, do it raw. They don't really wanna. They ain't working cause they don't really wanna. They don't really wanna. Alright, so another thing too is you gotta add the swag on there. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten when I'm recording and I'm any type of song, I'm not gonna use my YouTube speaking voice to record a song. I'm not gonna use my recording a song voice to do a YouTube video. So you got to put the swag on there too if you want it to exist the way you want it to. Now jumping forward, another huge part of this is going to be how you layer the vocals when they're done. What do you want to pop out more? You know, it's not rocket science. What do you want to pop out more? Do you want the reverb track to be your main track? Are you that type of artist? Or do you want the main vocals to be the dry vocals to be the main vocals, and you want the reverb track to support those. So you know, all you're going to do is just drag those around to get the desired sound that you're looking for. Is the reverb too high? Okay, well, turn it down a little bit. Is it overpowering the raw vocals? Turn it down a little bit. Is it not high enough? Turn it up a little bit. Do you like it on the left side of the mix or the right side of the mix? All of this stuff is personal preference. <clears throat> One thing I'm going to always recommend, though, take that beat, drag it to the top, not too far to the top, but drag it to the top. Because once you hit master, it's going to make sure that it's not busting out the speakers anyway. So let's move on to that part. Right? Master. You got to be connected to the Spire Studio to do this. You turn your enhance on, you're going to see it starting to improve clarity. It's starting to boost loudness. It's going to do some other stuff. And then you just dial it in what you want. You want coolness, you want hardcore. Coolness, hardcore. You want to be right there in the middle, make it right there in the middle. It's that simple guys. Then from that point you just need to export your song to SoundCloud, um, send it to somebody so they can lay their vocals on it. Uh, it wouldn't really make point to master it before you send it to somebody so they can lay their vocals on it because they could just master it on their end if they got a Spire Studio. But I mean you pretty much get the idea guys. So <clears throat> Basically, what I'm trying to say is, let's not overcomplicate things, okay? Mixing is just taking a whole bunch of different audio tracks and blending them together really, really, really well, despite what anybody will tell you so that they can get the bag off you. Mixing is just taking a whole bunch of tracks and combining them together really, really well so that they can sound pleasing to the ear. Now, that part is subjective. That's why everybody doesn't like every type of music. Mixing is subjective. They taught us this in Full Sail. There is no one way to do it. What you got to do is what sounds good to you. Now, mastering, guys, is just taking that final product and transferring it from one place to another and then using that other place as your main source for duplication of that record. So let's not get, over, let's not get carried away about what mastering is either. You can do both of these things in the Spire Studio. All you need to do, add your plugins before, Versus if you was using a digital audio workstation where you would add your plugins after. Um, and make sure you get a good recording, guys. I cannot stress how important the sound check is. <clears throat> I cannot express how important distancing from your microphone is. Uh, they taught us this at Full Sail. Even if you were recording in a studio with professional mics and this, that, and the third. And all of the stuff that you think is glorious for you to be able to make a hit song. What you still need to do is make sure your engineer is putting you certain distances away from the microphone. If your engineer is just letting you walk in there, stand as close or however far away from the microphone as you want, doing all this other stuff, nine times out of ten, they playing you anyway. Because a real session engineer is supposed to say, okay, let's listen, let's, let's, let's do a test run. And then they're supposed to come in there and say, okay, well, I need you to move a certain distance away from the microphone based off of how passionate or lack of passion or how quiet or how loud you are. So it's a lot of different stuff that go into recording aside from just pressing record and stopping that recording. So make sure you got the right distance. Make sure you got the right sound check. Make sure you take deep 
deep breaths before you jump into a recording to cut out as many breaths as possible. Make sure you train on your verse so that way you can find places to breathe before you record or while you're recording so that way you can substitute as many breaths. Sometimes when I'm recording, I, when I'm getting ready to take a breath, I'll just off to the side, suck in a little air. Maybe not right in front of the microphone, but maybe I'll go in through my nose or any any trick that you can come up with, right? So with the Spire Studio, mixing is simply everything you do while you record versus a digital audio workstation is everything you do after you record, right? Mastering is transferring it from here to another store, uh, another source. With the Spire Studio, you can boost that loudness, you can boost that clarity, you can get the, the type of sound that you're looking for as far as um, HD sound. You're not going to come, uh, you know, fresh out of GarageBand with it. I've recorded with GarageBand, I've recorded with this, I've recorded in major studios. I like this setup. I like this setup just as much as I like a major studio. Because I know what to do with this to get to where I'm trying to go. Right? So... Lil Shock It, you can do this too. Got some dope music, bro. I can't wait to hear you use the Spire Studio. We should definitely do a track. Um, you got that trippy shit that I like. Anyway, um, anybody that's making music, guys, using the Spire Studio, I look forward to hearing from you. I actually got a couple tracks that I got sent over from some people that I need to work on today, so I'm going to be doing that. Um, and now I had these tracks for a while, but either way, <laughs> um, if you're working on music using the Spire Studio, feel free to hit me up on Instagram, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, feel free to hit me up anywhere, you guys, um, be creative as possible and think outside the box when using the Spire Studio. Don't try to take in traditional recording, um, mannerisms that you had when you went into the studio because it's probably going to be a lot different when using the Spire Studio. Not to say that it's going to be easier or harder, but it's just going to be a lot of things that you have to do before versus after, right? It's that simple, guys. So you already know what it is. I don't want to make this video too long. Hopefully the information was jam-packed in there for you. I kept it a, a repetitive because I wanted y'all to just really, we got to simplify what we think is going on. Right, guys? So you already know what it is. It's your boy. Make sure you check out some music on my new Timothy Westbrook II artist page because I am no longer just a YouTuber. I'm an official artist on YouTube. You can see the little music note next to my name now. And have a good day. Make sure you stay safe. Make sure you stay home. Make sure you're working hard. Real quick, guys, um, a huge, huge way you can support this channel is by checking my music out on Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Tidal, whatever streaming service you own. I would also really love it if you guys go on my YouTube channel and listen to some music as well. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to leave comments so I know it was you. Have a blessed and wonderful day and also, guys, share some music with me. All the time I see you guys commenting, none of the time I see you guys sharing music with me. So send me some of your tracks, whether it be on Instagram or whether it's right here in the comments on YouTube, and give me a chance to check some stuff out.